Thank you so much for coming to Biz Talk. How are you? Hi, Max. I'm doing great. Thank you uh, for inviting me here. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. So let's start giving an introduction to yourself before talking about your venture. Awesome. So, yeah, my name is Anthony, Anthony Siams. I'm uh, one of the two founders of Cut It. Um, actually, I have been starting this company six years ago, almost six years. I've been uh, in commercial roles for the last 18 years. I started very young uh, as a street salesman and grow my way onto account manager, sales manager, commercial director in Europe. And the last 14, 15 years, I've been doing it in the, in the tech space. So I've been through it all, the whole OSI model. I worked in data center, connectiv connectivity providers, uh, application providers, security. So I've been on the technology side. So I've been very, um, very strong on the tech side and very uh, aware of what is going on. So that's about me, Max. That's great. So let's talk about your venture now. Yes. So when I just started, um, actually with the, with the uh, knowledge of the technology side, I wanted to disrupt an industry. At first, I wanted to uh, disrupt the fashion because obviously there was a lot of problems going on in the fashion looking at sustainability, fair employment and such. But unfortunately, I didn't know anything about the fashion, so I just jumped into the fashion. Uh, I call it the research and development phase because I've been really active on the field and tried a lot of things. I did uh, interme production intermediation, I did uh, web shops, I did uh, uh, trades and whatsoever, anything I could get to get money rolling and bootstrap the startup. And while we were doing it, this, we gave knowledge and with this knowledge, we built a solution. So the solution that we built is based on practical knowledge. We created a system that can track a product from its original existence. So the natural resource until the manufacturing process, until the distribution, the warehousing, retail, until the eventual consumer buys the product. So the entire product life cycle. And why did we created this? Because people are not aware what they have, how did it's built. For example, this hoodie, we're not aware how it's made. And that's a little bit strange in my head. Why do we not know what we use and how it's made? Because it obviously impacts the environment. So we created this solution uh, to get more aware, but also obviously with some commercial perspective, created tools and interfaces. So it's also commercially attractive because you want to make business more efficient. You want to have waste management, etc. So what have we exactly created then? We have cre created a software platform, which is a modular platform, which can be plugged into existing systems because we saw that there are many supply chains that have systems in place. So instead of moving those systems to us, we said, no, keep that system and we plug in into those systems so we can still track that data and consolidate your system to have a full spectrum of your entire view of the supply chain. But obviously there's a, a number, 67% of all supply chain don't even have a system in place, especially in manufacturer landscape. So we created these interfaces and tools so they can start gathering data because if you have the data, you can stop, you can start improving. See, the silly thing is the European government said we have to go to zero emission by 2050 uh, through the Green Deal. But how, gonna, how are we going to do, to do that without any data? So we have to start with gathering data, sort it, make it accessible and start learning to get to the zero emission. And that's exactly what we created. Um, and it's a big project, obviously, because the supply chain is very complex. And because it's so complex, we have to make it easy, easy to, uh, easy and simplify all these processes. And actually we did it quite, uh, uh, successful. We have, uh, I would say 70% of our system is done. The rest of the 30% needs to be filled by these, 
I call them pilot projects. Basically, the the the, the practical side. So, working with uh, 20, 30 uh, companies, and we can start test the system and start make things traceable. Currently, we have already three projects uh, running. Uh, we just started seven months ago with this new with this new business model, model because everything before that was just hustling and grinding to get things rolling. So, and I think it's a good traction. We have 23 opportunities in the funnel already with a worth of 3 million. So I wouldn't say, yeah, I would say we're doing quite well, but obviously, yeah, with some commercial background, it's, it's, it, it, we get things rolling. But now we really want to jump ahead because these laws are, are following up in the next 30 years. Uh, starting in 2026, we have to have a digital product passport in Europe. Uh, how, go, how, how are we going to manage that without any system in place? So that's what we created, Max. Thank you so much. And uh, Sigi, you're very passionate about this and it's absolutely great. You, you need to have passion to, do, you know, to start something that can be tough, but very, very rewarding. Uh, is, I mean, you say the technology, the system is already there. It's seventy percent done. I would, I would say, hundred percent done because you need data uh, to feed the the machine and start creating uh, what is the outcome that you want. Uh, how is going to be used by the B two B customers? Because I suppose your customer will be B two B, but also the ultimate consumer. Yes, eventually it can be used by consumer, but we focus on B two B, and the and the businesses can focus on their consumers. So basically, uh, what, to give you an example of a project, we work with a boating a boat a part firm, and they have these boat parts where they buy these boats, and obviously they have uh, they have a lot of products, four million in total. And what we do is we plug in into their existing systems with what we have, and in and and and. and, uh, and so, uh, give them an interface for their ERP, their CRM, uh, for their uh, project management, their finance, etc. So they have full traceability on the business operations side. Because they say, okay, we have to be traceable, but you have, don't only trace the supply chain, you have to trace the business operation as well. Because if you say you're so sustainable, yeah, show it then in your operation. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter where we step in. We step in, in uh, where data is available. Uh, because obviously there is a lot of data available in certain companies, but it's not fully utilized most of the time. They they uh, export it to Excel, and then you have a data analyst looking at it, and then you know you 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 have gaps, and so we really have to make the circle round, as you say. Hey, there are uh, today supply chain is very complicated, very uh, very complex uh, system, but today there are. Maybe, as you said, not even 50 50 that can have a system in place. Many of them, they are just on paper. So, for the one who are not ready yet, are we going to approach them? Are we going to sell your system to them? Yes. Uh, we sell the system uh, and we integrate all the tools that we have. So, actually, the tools that we created are already like we have the CRM uh, module, we have a ERP module, we have a finance module, we have uh, um, project management module, deal pipeline module. So we have these modules that are very, very interesting for these companies. They ha don't gather data at all. So they will make a huge leap in terms of getting their operation running more sophisticated. I mean, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to use your system because I want to lower my footprint. And uh, you said at the beginning, consumers should know where uh, stuff are produced, right? If I'm a consumer, I'm going to buy some some product that has been produced by someone who uses your system. May I know, may I trace back to the beginning of this product that I'm going to buy? Yes, actually, I have a great uh, example to show you because uh, to make it more visual, yeah? So I have this product here. I bought this product and it's a nice product. And now I want to know more about this product. So basically you have with NFC technology, you can scan the buttons and then you have information oh, about that's... this product. Oh. You can see the, sto oh, you can see the story, the product journey. Oh, you can good. see, yes. And at some point, because I bought this product and it's a unique product, I can connect it to myself. I, I need to have an account. 
And now I'm the owner of this product. Oh, that's brilliant. Exactly. This, this comes with your system. Yes, yes. Oh, well done, absolutely well done. Uh, now, what's going to be your market uh, strategy? Let's say you will, after testing, which is, is going to be very soon, this is why you're fundraising after we talk about fundraising. So what's going to be next? Where do you want to start? Uh, where is going to be the market? So basically, I want to have, I want to maintain the quality of the infrastructure. So I'm always saying to, to the team, we're building a new highway, basically the traceability highway of products. So instead of uh, approaching all these customers to get on our uh, infrastructure, we want to work with partners, partners that can focus on their specific industries. We have one uh, uh, launching partner at the moment in Italy, uh, in Milan, and obviously in Milan, you have a lot of luxury and et cetera. Um, and uh, what we do is like they can focus on specific industries. So, for example, the automotive, the batteries, the fashion industry, uh, the, 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 the agriculture, because the market is so huge. But to get so much data at our platform, we cannot do it alone. And that's where we also believe that we have to empower new innovation to create new ways of creating jobs. That's why everything we create is open API. So, for example, this partner wants to use our infrastructure. They can even build on top of that solution for their convenience. So that's a plug and play for who has already the system, right? Yes, you, excellent. Who, who doesn't, you are providing them with the tools and system they need. Uh, let, me, uh, let me go through the fundraising. How much are you raising now? So we're raising at the moment just a humble one million uh, because, uh, and that gives us, by the way, uh, 18 months of runway um, just to get things rolling. And it's our first round ever. So I don't want to be uh, raising this already while we never raised any funds before. Until now, it's a bootstrap startup. We have been managing by uh, our own funds by creating deals. But uh, to get things rolling, we, we're creating, uh, we, we raise 1 million to further develop the system, first of all, but also have commercial activities rolling because we want to be profitable all the, all the way. So instead of only building, we have to have our commercial side keep going as well because it needs to be fundraising, but then also deals coming in. So, you know, the cash flow gets healthy. Of course. So now, let's say you raise one million. How are you going to use this money? Yeah. So basically, uh, two parts. Actually, three parts. But the third part is less uh, of the funds used. Uh, use of funds. The first part is we are um, uh, creating a, a modular analytic system. So we have these systems already in place, but we have the analytic dashboard. We need an analytic dashboard to really see things, make the data really visible. And the other part is um, we have to be developing the system more with the knowledge that we get. That we get. So we're going to expand with some more developers. And the, and, the, and the second one is the commercial activities. So we will definitely start getting our first uh, pilot uh, uh, partners. I call them industry innovators, by the way. So they are agencies selling the system, selling the infrastructure to their industries. Uh, and then, and then the thirdly is like uh, administration, legal things, etc., to uh, to have things really robust. So, how do you make money out of it? So that's a good question. So uh, we make money by subscriptions, first of all. Um, the system comes with subscription, uh, and then you have the you have different uh, type of uh, flavors: uh, the basic flavor, and then the premium flavor to really get in depth data, and then so. Basically, uh, like a SaaS model, but where are we heading to? Because if we gather so much data and we really believe the one that generates the data is the owner of the data. So they have their data in their own control. And that's obviously possible with blockchain. So we're really building into the blockchain as well. So as they are the owner of the, of the, of the data, when the government or when their stakeholders or when the uh, suppliers or customers want to look into the data, they can say, okay, you can have the data, but you have to, I have to make a data transaction. So you pay data transaction fee. So where we're heading to in the moonshot, I should say, is being the product data bank 
that uh, that that makes the data transaction possible. So working with fees, data transaction fees. So I pay the subscription plan and after so the sus uh, the sus model and after based on how many data are sold, you charge on it on them. Yes, yes. Now yep. they sell sell it to each other. So I, I'm just being the, the mediator, making it possible. Absolutely. So basically, being the data bank of Internet of Materials. Absolutely clear. Uh, I mean, first of all, the technology, it's all yours? Yes. Uh, everything that we created is all ours. Um, obviously, we will work into uh, other partners as well because we, we, we really don't believe in like being uh, like everything on our end so we have to have to need we need to have strategic partners so we want to be blockchain agnostic for example so we, we built into the blockchain network so that's not ours uh we and for example uh someone has their uh sap they have their erp in place so we built into sap we built into salesforce and that's how we make sure that we have everything and that's why i say a highway because obviously when you have the highway, the villages and the and the and the and the, and the uh, streets over there are done by them, yeah. not by that. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what's your vision? Where do you see your company in five years time? So what I see, and that's where it's very good actually. What I see is that we are being the uh, the day. Um, I would say the data provider, the product data provider of the Internet of Materials. So I see being us as a hub of uh, a data gathering where we interconnect with other parties because obviously we will get uh, competitors. And it's good because I want competitors because I want to have peer data with them. I want to transact data with them. So we have the complete overview of how things are made, when they are made, who made it, so we can learn and start making things more sustainable and we care to create fair employment and have innovation. Let me give you one innovation uh, for, for example. If I have all my clothes in my phone, I have a digital inventory, what can come next? Imagine a, a smart closet, a smart closet with a screen that exactly knows what you have in that closet. So it can advise you, hey, today's a nice weather. Maybe you should wear green today. That's, That's the future. <laughs> Absolutely, it is indeed. I hope you will get that very soon. <laughs> Why investing in Anthony, his team, and his startup? Now, first of all, you see the energy flowing, <laughs> 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 and, and, and I can I can talk for the whole team because this energy is like you know it's like it's like a, a fire. You know, it, everyone <laughs> gets <laughs> involved <laughs> into it. Uh, first of all, that, and we really do it from the heart. We really believe in it. It doesn't matter if you go to storm, if you go through difficulties, we go and we go and we go. And actually, uh, we have done this the last five years already. We have been going through a lot because you have to raise your own money and, and, and such. And we're still happy. We're never down or whatever. We're, we're still here and just smiling. And we're like, okay, but tomorrow is going to be a better day, <laughs> if not today. <laughs> That's the great attitude. Anthony, thank you so much for coming to Bistock. It's been a very great pleasure for me. All the best, and I hope in Equity Match we can help you to get the funding and get things started, the process to create thank you, startup. Thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure being here, and thank you for the invitation. And um, yes, I'm blessed. Thank you. Pleasure. Take care. Bye.